My name is Freddie Cruz, and it is my job to share with you the stories of individuals, businesses, and organizations that make the greater Houston area great. In this episode, we're talking about a dog who's not only making the greater Houston area great, but making the world a better place. Her name is Bubbles, and she is a survivor of animal cruelty. She was shot in the face, and her jaw was broken with a hammer. Today, she travels to schools across the Houston area to teach children the importance of humane animal treatment. At once harrowing, her story is that of triumph and proof that there are far more good guys than bad guys. During this episode, you'll hear how Bubble's family rescued her, her road to recovery, and what exactly she's doing to make the world a better place. Learn more about Bubbles at IamBubbles.com. You can also help grow the show by sharing this episode far and wide with your family and friends and or leaving a review. Thank you. Hi, right, I'm Ed Sheeran. This is Bruno Mars. Hey, it's Katy Perry. This is your man Flo Rida with Freddie Cruz. This is AJ Mitchell with Freddie Cruz. Freddie Cruz. Freddie Cruz. Tell you go pick Mr. 305 and you already know what it is. My name is Freddie and it's time to cruise through HTX. Kylan, I met you and your husband, Ike, several years ago, and of course, you had this beautiful little dog, Bubbles, with you, uh, one eye, a survivor of animal abuse. For my friends who are not quite familiar with her story and the story of your family and how you've taken her in, could you start there? Sure. Um, Bubbles was surrendered to the Bark Animal Shelter. Um, someone obviously saw what happened to her and uh, brought her into the shelter because they, they basically didn't know what else to do for her. From there, Houston Pets Alive took her in and rescued her from the shelter. And we were volunteering at the Houston Pets Alive shelter, and that's where we met Bubbles. Um, and we were lucky enough to become her medical foster parents. She was missing her right eye. And she had some some issues with her her jaw. Going through the process of going to the vets and getting x-rays and stuff, um, we discovered that she had a bullet that was lodged in the right side of her head. And she had a broken jaw on the right side also. So it was very obvious that um, she had been shot through the eye and also beaten with a hammer. And that's probably what broke her jaw. Even all these years later, it's painful to hear that. And so as her foster mom and a failed foster now, and for anybody who doesn't know what a failed foster is, that means you fostered her and like, (laughs) okay, that's it. We're not giving her back. We're keeping her. (laughs) We we knew from the first moment we saw her, we were not giving her back. (laughs) You knew it was going to be a failure from the moment you got her. Uh, (laughs) Absolutely. But uh, does, does... Sharing does sharing her story get any easier? It's still difficult. You might hear my voice kind of quiver a little bit as I tell her story, just because I I kind of imagine what she went through. However, because of her resiliency and her attitude, it does make it easier because she is a very happy puppy. She always has been, even when she still had the bullet in her head. She was running around, playing with other dogs, and just living her life the best way that she could. Um, So it was just our responsibility to get her through the medical stuff. She already had everything else handled. Um, So it's important for us to tell her story, to make people aware that this stuff, unfortunately, does go on. And that dogs can come through it and they can lead a happy, joyful life even after something like this has happened. You and Ike were convinced that you were going to keep her from the moment you had her. But was there ever any doubt from a veterinary standpoint where the doctors were telling you, "Eh, we don't know, y'all, it might be more humane to, to euthanize her? Was there ever any moment like that? Yes, there was a lot of questions in the beginning. A couple of doctors were like, you know, we're really going to have to think outside the box to figure out exactly what to do with her. Um, Mainly because her jaw, TMJ joint had actually shattered and then it had actually started kind of fusing back together because she was still a young puppy and everything was still growing and building. So... It was, nobody really knew exactly what the jaw was going to be able to do because she was only open, able to open her mouth about half an inch at that point. So finding the solution for the jaw was the biggest issue um, 
removing the eye was not too much of a problem and closing up the ear wasn't too scary, but just her being able to open her mouth so she could eat and drink and do the things you need to do to sustain life. Um, that was where there was some question. And we were very fortunate that we found a very good veterinarian that was willing to take the chance and did an amazing job. What was the, what was the survival rate for her going into that surgery? Was it 50-50 or? It was about 50-50. Yeah, it was v- her first surgery. We were on pins and needles for, for quite a while. And this um, was, just I'm to, sorry to interrupt. If she could make it through. I'm sorry to interrupt. This was the, the first surgery was to get the bullet out? The first surgery was quite extensive. It was to um, remove the bullet, to close up her right ear completely. So they wanted to take out all the sebaceous glands so that they wouldn't lead to any infections later. And also what they did was they removed part of her lower jaw so that it could hinge so that she would be able to open it. How long was that surgery? It was about three and a half to four hours. Wow. It was very extensive. And actually just to intubate her for the surgery, they couldn't because of... um, she wasn't able to open her mouth, right? So they, it wasn't large enough to get the tube in there. So there was even talk of having um, to do intubation through the uh, esophagus and all that kind of stuff. And that was very scary. But luckily, um, because there was an amazing surgical team, they were able to get a small enough tube in there to intubate her through the mouth. You're going out and teaching the importance of, of humane animal treatment And I love this mission because I really do think it starts early when you look at animal abuse cases. It's not a, it's not a race or ethnicity thing. Um, I've had a friend say, yeah, it's a class thing. And if it's a class thing, then maybe, you know, it's a classroom thing uh, with education and teaching people from a young age that, well, this is how we treat animals and this is how we, how we don't treat animals. And so, How do you and your family sugarcoat the story for little kids? Or are you quite forthright like, okay, she was shot in the head and hit with a hammer? We are very careful with how we talk to kids about what happened. We sugarcoat it to a degree. We do not go into specific details. So um, we do not tell them that she was shot in the head because even adults have trouble hearing that sometimes. And that's not our point. We want to bring awareness without bringing intense sadness. So by doing that, we want to let people know that this does happen. This does go on. Here's things you can do to report it if you see it. Here's things you can do to prevent it. And um, we talk to kids about not doing it, not hurting animals, because they really do have feelings and it's very important how you how you treat them. When you bring bubbles to an environment where there are children, what's that what's that like for you? What's the average response when they see her because I mean she is so happy <laughs> and so sweet. It is amazing. Um so when we first got through all her surgeries, we started taking her to a lot of events um just to get her socialized and see how she handled um being around people and being around other dogs. And the more we took her out, the more we realized that she absolutely loves people and she loves other dogs. She's just happy to be out and about and around people. And so um, when she sees kids, she gets extremely happy. And, you know, kids, there's been a few that kind of look at her and are like, yeah, I'm not so sure. She looks kind of different. But then I'm like, you know, if you want to touch her, you you can. She's very friendly. And then once they start petting on her and loving on her, then they're like, oh, she's so sweet. She's so nice. And And they're like, but what happened to her eye? And I'm like, well, she got injured when she was a puppy, but she's happy now. And we just kind of let kids um, feel it on their own time and let them enjoy her and she's so calm with them that they they start to relax and just just feel really comfortable with her. And so that's how we knew that I that she would make a good therapy dog. 
That's one thing that really surprises me, even to this day. And I've known I've known of Bubbles for for years now. I've met you and your husband on a couple of occasions in person. Is that she she's never had any anxiety, at least being in public. She's so good with people, and as someone mm-hmm. who and I work with Citizens for Animal Protection, so I'm around animals more often than the average person. And so you know when an animal is anxious or scared, they have that that proclivity sometimes to to snap or bite or growl and I mean I just it is miraculous that she loves everything <laughs> and everybody. It is. You're right. It truly is and you know that's that's how we even met you in the first place was we were at an event and she just kept staring at you. And I'm like, <laughs> you didn't even notice her at that point. And she's just stopped and was staring at you. And I looked at you and I'm like, I think she's flirting with you. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> you were like, oh, look at that cutie. And that's that's how you two met. So, um, but she does that. She just, she walks around and it's basically like she's winking at everybody and she she just looks at people and gets their attention, and then they start coming over and wanting to pet on her. And she's like, "Yep, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted you to do." <laughs> Tell me how cute I am and pet me, please. Now, yeah, five, five exactly. minutes ago, that's, <laughs> that's her life. Just dote on me as much as you can. <laughs> um, so, something else that I that I loved that last time I, I saw you and your family at a at one of the many, 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 many dog events around the Houston area is that your you and your son put together a book, Bubbles Finds Hope. And what a beautiful way to not only share her story, but also encourage humane animal treatment. I decided a few years ago that I wanted to do more outreach with the children, like you said, to teach them at a young age. And I thought that um, by writing a children's book, it would be a good way to get into classrooms and um, just have something that kids could read and take home to their families and share with their sisters, brothers, cousins, and everybody else. And it's just more, a better way to reach more people than just specifically going to certain events. Um, So I wrote the book and my son, who was 17 at the time, did the illustrations And um, we have a character in it named Hope. And so the title of the book is Bubbles Finds Hope. You show me the illustrations and then you told me that your son did it. I'm like, it's a whole team effort. (laughs) Right. I, you know, I asked him from the beginning if it was something he wanted to do. And he said yes. And then like a typical teenager, it took a while to get him motivated and going. And I I told him, I'm like, if this isn't what you want to do, then we can, you know, hire an illustrator. And he's like... No, but it's my bubbles and I want to do it because I know her. I know how she is. And I'm like, okay, then let's do it. (laughs) And I think he did a really wonderful job of truly capturing Bubbles' personality because he does know her. So that made it extra special. Right. Absolutely. And readers, especially from a from a young age too, they they pick up on that authenticity, uh, not just with the words that come from the page, but with, with illustrations as well. And I'd like for you to talk a little bit about the character Hope and how she relates to Bubbles in the story. Well, with our story, we wanted to do more than just tell a story about a dog that had been abused. We also wanted to encourage people and children that people that may not look exactly like them are still have a wonderful life, still have a happy life, uh, whether it's a dog or a person. So with Hope, she is missing one leg, but we don't make an issue of it in the book. We just show it with the illustrations. But we show Hope finding Bubbles, rescuing Bubbles, taking care of all of her needs, and then Hope and Bubbles just go on and do all the fun things that a girl and her puppy should do. They both have a little bit of a physical issue, but it's nothing that slows them down. And we just kind of wanted to make that part of the story. 
And it's a beautiful one too. And I'm just so happy that I have met your family and this beautiful <laughs> little girl, Bubbles, the dog. And it, it blows me away every time I see her on, on Instagram and every time I see her on YouTube that something that has been through such a dark time when you would least expect it or even once for any living creature to experience that something that is that has gone through that can live as if it never even happened. Absolutely. And she does. She lives every day like it just did not happen. Um, and I'm so happy for her that she was able to do that because truly maybe not all dogs get to that point. Um, I have seen dogs that have been through trauma that, you know, still always carry some residual, but with bubbles, it's just, um, a determination in her that she wasn't going to let that keep her down. And so that's kind of honestly strong for us as humans too, to be like, well, if she went through that and she's not letting that hold her back, then maybe we don't have to let everything hold us back that we think we do to get through things, trying to know that there's a brighter day ahead. What has Bubbles taught you personally? Bubbles has taught me more about compassion than I thought I knew ever, especially for animals. Um, she has taught me that there is more abuse than I realized, and also the connection between domestic violence and animal abuse. These are all things I did not think about before we had bubbles in uh, her, her situation. She has taught me how truly loving an animal can be and how much they give us. I've always had dogs and felt special connections with them, but the way she just emits this happy hormone and and makes everyone feel so nice is it is truly incredible to see. It took me a few times, but I would I would actually sometimes look at her on Instagram and just start crying. <laughs> just because she makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That was our point with, with the Instagram page is we want to bring happiness. We want people to see that, you know, she's abused, but we don't want to dwell on the sad, sad parts. We want to dwell on the happy parts. And um, we try our best to do things that are very encouraging and uplifting. So maybe even if you're having a bad day, all you need to do is go to her page and look at one of her goofy little pictures, <laughs> and hopefully that will make you smile at least for a few minutes and take your mind off of something. Um, so we like to call it basically online therapy. We go out and we do therapy work in person, but maybe that's a way that we, we can do some bit of therapy online without um, having to meet people in person. What kinds of therapy do you do with her? And, and other people? Is it mainly cancer kids, cancer patients of all ages, PTSD? We It depends on where we get invited to. Um, so we do mainly work with kids, but not exclusively. Um, we have one children's hospital that we go to, and a lot of those kids have been through trauma themselves, whether it's through an accident or physical abuse, maybe even by somebody in their household. Um, so Kids with specific traumas actually make a really close connection with Bubbles um, because they they do know that she was hurt by somebody. So that's that's really special to see. Um, we have done some things with kids with um, like a Special Olympics kind of things. So kids that may also have physical um, disabilities make a, a nice connection with Bubbles because there's no judgment. You know, that's the great thing about dogs. There's no judgment. And so they come up and love on her and she loves on them equally. And so we really enjoy those special kind of times. I want to wrap up the interview, Kylan, with sort of a fun question. If Bubbles had a human voice, who would she sound like? Oh, good Lord. I can't think of a specific person, but I envision her as a happy teenager that may be a little bit of an oxymoron there, but um, <laughs> speaking from personal experience. <laughs> but I would envision if a young teenager was happy. 
<laughs> that that would be her voice. Um, I, I see her like as a, the happy care bear um, and just a nice lifting voice that's just running around excited all the time. Happy that the sun is out and just running and playing. I am bubbles.com is the website. She's also on Instagram, very Insta famous. And the book is Bubbles Finds Hope, which you can learn more about on their website. Kyle Lynn, thank you so much for coming by the podcast and sharing Bubbles stories with my friends. Thank you very much for having us. We enjoyed it. Hey. You're not going to make it through the entire episode without me reminding you once again that if you enjoy this podcast, you can help me grow the show by leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform and by signing up for the newsletter. I can guarantee there will be free stuff involved at some point before the end of summer. So if you want to get in on some freebies, you can sign up at cruisethroughhtx.com, C-R-U-Z, through hx.com.